remember to pick up your pom-poms at the 30 yard line and fluff them before the introduction. Super Bowl programs. Super Bowl souvenirs. Super Bowl pennants. Super Bowl programs. Your Super Bowl programs. wear the black jerseys, the white numerals, the golf pants with the black stripe and the black helmet. And across the way, the Rams, their colors are gold and blue. They wear white jerseys, blue numerals, gold pants, and they've got the blue and gold helmet. Theirs has been a storybook season. The off-season death of their owner, Carol Rosenblum. His wife, Georgia, taking over the ball club. The firing of his son, Steve, was now with the New Orleans Saints. The distinction they had within the organization. But all through this, Ray Malabese has held the club together and brought them to the NFC title to face the defending champion Steelers in Super Bowl XIV. The Steelers and the Rams arrived at this championship game from opposite directions. In the 14-year history of the Super Bowl, never have two teams been so different. The Steelers were the defending champions. They had the best record in the NFL and came to Pasadena supported by the loudest, most loyal fans in all of football. The Rams, on the other hand, had the worst record of any team ever to play in a Super Bowl. And unlike the Steelers, they looked at their fans with cynicism and indifference. For these were the same people who had booed and insulted them at mid-season when they were hurt and in second place. The Rams came to the Super Bowl with a grim resolve to erase their reputation as a team with no heart and to bury forever their infamous legacy of choking in championship games. Give the pitch to Totter, holds that ball like a loaf of bread, turns the corner at the 20 to 25. Come get it, come get it, that's it, come on, Wendell. Come on, Wendell. That play's gonna break. That play's there. 46 F will be there. Dwight White is way down in the game. We blew him out on that, but boy, I'll tell you, 46 F is hell of a All right. 46F, boy, he took a hole a mile wide. There combo, hands it off to Wendell Tyler, looking for an opening across the 50, the 45-yard line, the 40, look out, far sideline, 35, the 30, missed by a tackler, the 20, the 15, and down the 14-yard line. Come on, let's go! Wendell Tyler's 39-yard gain early in the first quarter was the longest run permitted by Pittsburgh all year. And it's worth another look. Although he didn't become a starter until the fifth week of the season, Tyler finished the year as the Rams' leading rusher. And this weaving trip through the Steelers set up the first touchdown of Super Bowl XIV. Cullen Bryant piled into the end zone and gave Los Angeles a 7-3 lead. And right now, the Rams are winning the battle of the line of scrimmage. They're getting off the ball, and they're beating the Steelers' defensive line. It's going to be a long day today, boys. Kicking from the shadows, booms the ball, a line drive, maybe a chance for a return as Anderson gathers it in at the two. He's back to the 10 to 15 to 20 to 25. Look out the near side on the 30 to 35 to 40 down the near side on it. 
caught from behind by Joe Harris and swung out of bounds at the 47-yard line. And the Steelers got to go to work. For the last several years, it has sometimes seemed that there is one league for the Pittsburgh Steelers and another for the rest of those who play pro football. For hidden beneath Pittsburgh's smooth and flawless execution is the pounding pulse of brute power. On defense as well as offense, the Steelers breed the conviction in the opposing team that it must play an almost superhuman level of football to have any chance to succeed. The Rams gave ground grudgingly and kept Pittsburgh out of the end zone until early in the second period. One yard line, just inside the one. Here it is, the irresistible force and the immovable defense. Pitch the ball to Franco, and he's running wide right, and he goes in for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Flyer was his blocker. He came outside, Rocky. There was nobody there. Now they made it look easy. Come on, boys, let's go, you jerk. The Steelers were still the same tough Steelers, but they would soon discover that their opponents were definitely not the same old Rams. Throughout the year, the Rams were a running team, often inflexible, always conservative. But today, when their running game faltered, they threw caution to the winds and decided to gamble on the raw passing skills of a young substitute quarterback named Vince Ferragamo. Pat Hayden, the Rams' regular quarterback, was injured and watched the game from the coach's booth, hoping that his young replacement would not crack under Pittsburgh's pressure. Ferragamo faced the famous charge of the steel curtain with poise and resilience. Although he was sacked several times, his consistently accurate passing enabled the Rams to control the ball for the rest of the first half. Twice Ferragamo moved the Rams into scoring position only to have potential touchdown passes bounce off the fingertips of his intended receiver. Some of the points, which had slipped through the Rams' fingers, were retrieved by the tour Frank Corral, whose two field goals gave Los Angeles a three-point lead. Paragamo the other day said, I know we're going to win. He said, I won't give you the score, but I know we're going to win. And I was sitting six inches from him when he said it, so he said it, a Joe Namath-type statement. The Rams had not only the lead, but a new image as well. A once drab and lifeless offense had taken on a new luster. At the end of the first half, nothing seemed right for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Players that are usually lively and lighthearted were guarded and somber. And the coach, Chuck Knoll, who is usually grim and intense, 
was loose and full of fun. And uh, I had talked to Art Rooney the other day, and he said, I don't have a feeling about this game. I can't get a feeling. And whenever I haven't had a feeling, our Steelers have been beaten. Well, right now, they're on the trailing end of a 13 to 10 score. They got to buckle down. Terry Bradshaw began the second half with the same curiously conservative approach he had used in the first half. Nibbling at the Ram defense with short, safe passes to his running backs. But then, like a pool hall hustler who has been trifling with his victim too long, Bradshaw suddenly showed his game. He looks downfield, has time, cranks it, going long for Swan! He's got it! Swan, touchdown, Pittsburgh! Bradshaw's pass to Lynn Swan was a concise resume of the Steeler attack. Daring and explosive able to score from anywhere at any time. The Rams had two defensive backs covering Swan and a linebacker blitzing Bradshaw, and still they could not damage the throw or prevent the catch. Takes it for the touchdown. A perfect strike by Terry Bradshaw. I love it. Bradshaw, on his first attempt of the long bomb in this game, has hit one for the TD. Well, what do you think about that? The Steelers move ahead. 17 to 13. Surely this stunning blow, one that has become a Steeler trademark the last two seasons, would finally brush off the pesky rack. It did not. Ferragamo took a page from Bradshaw's go for broke book and hit Billy Waddy for a 50 yard game. Before the Steelers could recover, the Rams struck again. Ball goes to McCutcheon, option pass, he throws downfield, leaping drive, touchdown, Ron Smith! Back and forth we go. The Rams back out in front by a score of 19 to 17, and we've not seen that play all year long. Maybe it was the fact that nobody gave them much of a chance, and therefore there wasn't much to lose. Maybe it was simply the realization by the Rams coaches that their team had to open up on offense to win. Great play. Whatever the reason. These new remodeled Rams had come from behind for the third time in this Super Bowl to take the lead. Frank Corral missed the extra point, but the Rams' touchdown had revealed another facet of their expansive new offense and with it, a two-point advantage. While the Rams' offense expanded, its defense contracted and tightened up. They clogged up Pittsburgh's inside running lanes, and since neither Franco Harris, number 32, nor Rocky Blyer, number 20, has the flat-out speed to run wide, the Steelers were forced to abandon the running game they take so much pride in. Terry Bradshaw still had Lynn Swan to throw to, but even that ray of reassurance faded when Swan was knocked out of the game by Pat Thomas. With a crippled passing attack, and a sputtering running game, the Steeler Express wobbled into disaster. Twice in the third period, Bradshaw was intercepted, once by Eddie Brown, and again by Rod Perry, number 49. Frustration that had played so much a part of the Rams' season now belonged to the Steelers. Time runs 
comes out in the third quarter of play. 15 minutes of football remain. The crowd on its feet in the Rose Bowl. The score, the Rams 19 and the Steelers 17. Great teams aren't always great. They're just great when they have to be. Bradshaw calls out the signals. Remember Pittsburgh, the most dangerous fourth quarter team in the NFL. Now Bradshaw pumping, firing downfield. There goes Stallworth. He pulls it in at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and it's a touchdown for Pittsburgh on the ball to Stallworth. And Stallworth beat Rob Perry. Oh, did he beat him? And the Steelers fire right back. The pass to John Stallworth succeeded because of a mistake in the Rams secondary. It appeared as if Stallworth had simply beaten Rod Perry man on man. But actually, Perry should have had help from safety Eddie Brown. The Rams employed five defensive backs on the play. And Brown, the safety, was responsible for the deep middle zone. But when Stallworth raced through the middle, Brown ignored him and never helped Perry. Stallworth, who should have been double teamed, outreached his single pursuer for the ball. After Stallworth's touchdown, the Steelers loosened up as though the game were over. Once again, they were wrong. The lead changing hands seven times, and the Rams hope that they have one more chance left. I think we can throw on first down now. We, I think we can throw on first down, even drop back passes. Hey, Ray, you got to go to the end zone with it. You got to go to the end zone with it. 86 yards away from the Steeler end zone, printed by five points. Maybe one more miracle remains in their satchel in the 1979 season. Okay, come on, fair gama, play action, you sucker! Looking downfield, throws downfield, caught by Drew Helen on the bounce. Let's go! Move your offensive line! The Rams summoned up the heart no one thought they had. Ferragamo trips up, regains his balance. And slowly fought their way toward the Steeler goal. All right, that's it. We got it. We got it. Here's the delay handoff. It's on the Brian. 45, 40, 35. He's still this thing in the 30-yard line. Fans who withheld their love for so long suddenly poured it out in cheers for a scrappy underdog who refused to give up. He's going to scramble. He's going to run the 35, the 40, and down the 40. Where's that? Everybody go! On first down, he looks downfield. He shoots it over the middle. Long for. Get on! A diving catch at the 40 yard line. First down, Rams. The Rams were on the verge of another score when Ferragamo made his first and only mistake of the game. Ferragamo back to pass, shoots it over the middle. Intercepted by the Steelers, Lambert at the 15, the 20. Lambert still on his feet, cutting to the middle of the field, and he's down at the 30-yard line. First interception of the game off the arm of Ferragamo, and for Pittsburgh Steelers fans, it could not have come at a better time with 5.24 to go in the game. Waddy was wide open, Ray. Waddy was wide open, Ray, on the post. By day, the Rams' sparkling spirit had kept the game close. But by night, it faded into the black reality of the Pittsburgh Steelers mustering whatever it takes to win games when most of America is watching. You're not going to throw uh, high percentage passes against uh, the Rams. Go deep and get the big play because they're, they're going to take away high percentage passing. Pittsburgh just wants to maintain possession, and it's a very big third down play. Nickel defense in for Los Angeles. Bradshaw back to pass. He sets up at the 23. He throws long down the center of the field for Stallworth. He's gone at the 25 and down at the 22. The first.
first long pass to Stallworth had given the Steelers the lead. This one pointed the way to ultimate victory. And now the Rams' hopes start to dip as Pittsburgh is on their way to another world championship. Slices off the left side for a touchdown. Franco has slicing off the left side for a Steeler touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl 14 is history. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the champions of the National Football League for the second straight year. Super Bowl 14 took its shape from the team that lost just as much as the team that won. The Los Angeles Rams earned a dignity in defeat which they had never achieved in victory. The Rams won respect, but the Pittsburgh Steelers won another world championship.